In this video, we're going to look at how to solve an equation using a table. So the first example we have is the equation y equals 1 half x minus 4. And here we have a table of values that I've uh, generated using Desmos. And just a little review of how this table is generated. You, you pick whatever x value you want, and then you're going to plug that in for x into the equation and see what you get. All right, so basically I want to figure out what is 1 half times my x value, which is negative 4, take away 4. All right, this was my x. So 1 half times negative 4, that would be negative 2, take away 4, and that gives me negative 6. So that's my y value um, when x is negative 4, and it's in the table right there. And so similarly, all of these values were gener generated by plugging the corresponding value here in the x column into the equation and seeing what the y value is. All right, so how could we use this table to solve an equation? So let me give you an example of the kind of equation we want to solve. Let's say we want to solve the equation negative 3.5 equals 1 half x minus 4. Now, some of you will probably know another technique to solve this by doing stuff to both sides, like adding 4 to both sides, multiplying on both sides, isolating the x, and that's great. Uh, but we're going to see an example where maybe you don't know how to do that, and so learning how to read a table, and even if you do know how to do it, um, learning how to read a table and visualize things in different ways using tables and graphs is extremely valuable in becoming a, a well-rounded math student and, and really deepening your knowledge. All right, so let's take a look here uh, of how these two things relate. So remember, this table over here is generated with this equation. So notice this 1 half x minus 4 is the same. All right, I can only use the table for y equals 1 half x minus 4 to solve an equation that is in the form, you know, something equals 1 half x minus 4. So in this case, that something is negative 3.5. All right, so these are my y values here. These are my y values in this column, the second column. And so we want to use our table and we want to try to find where does y equal negative 3.5. All right, so we just look down the table. Oh, there it is, negative 3.5. Well, what x value is causing the y value to be negative 3.5? It is 1. All right, so x equals 1 is the solution to that equation. I didn't have to do stuff to both sides or get out my calculator or anything. I could literally pick out the solution from the table if I know what I'm looking for. Now, we could check our solution by plugging 1 into 1 half x minus 4. Half of 1 is a half. Take away 4 is negative 3 and a half, so that does check out. All right, let's try another one using this same table. All right, can you use this table to solve the equation negative 5 equals 1 half x minus 4? If you need a minute, pause the video and see if you can figure it out and start the video up when you're ready. All right, so hopefully you know that what you're looking for, this is your y value that corresponds to this y value of the equation over here. So I'm just going to look down the table. Oh, there it is. There's y equal negative 5. So I just look for the corresponding x value, which is negative 2. And I have my solution. Easy peasy. And you could go through and check that if you wanted to. Now, the table is a little bit limited, right? Let's say I, I wanted you to solve um, 7 equals 1 half x minus 4. Well, if I look down my table here, I don't have a y value of 7. I could try expanding my table until I get to 7. And that might be a lot of work, all right? But you could see the pattern in the table. You could expand the table out using the pattern. Um, and there are ways to do that. But the table is easiest to use when the y value you're looking for is actually in the table that you have, or you could figure it out more easily. Now, this was a pretty straightforward example. Let's look at a, an example that's a little more complicated. So here we have the table of y equals x squared plus 2x minus 4. 
So let's say we want to solve the equation. Now again, I'm going to have to use something equals x squared plus 2x minus 4 in order for you to be able to use this table to solve this. All right, I have to write the equation so this matches. So I'm going to pick a value. Uh, let's pick negative 1. Okay. So again, this is my y value. Negative 1 is my y value corresponding here to this equation. So I'm going to look down my chart here. These are my y values, and I'm trying to figure out where it's negative 1. Well, do you see it? There's a negative 1. Don't stop, because guess what? There's another one. All right, so this is where you may not know how to solve this equation algebraically yet, and that's okay, and you'll eventually learn that if you keep going. But the table provides us a way to find the answer. As a matter of fact, there are two answers to this, two solutions. If x is negative 3, y will come out to be negative 1. And if x is 1, y will come out to be negative 1. Let's check both of those. This will be good practice. So maybe I'll check this one, and you can check the other one. So if I let x be negative 3, I'm going to plug that in for my x's. So I'm going to do negative 3 squared. 2 times negative 3, uh, plus 2 times negative 3, minus 4. So negative 3 squared is 9. And then this will give me plus a negative 6, take away 4. 9 plus negative 6 is 3. Take away 4 is negative 1. Right? That's what we wanted. We wanted the y value to come out to be negative 1. All right, why don't you do the check for 1? That will be good practice. Make sure that comes out to be negative 1 as well. All right, let's try one more from this table. Oh, maybe two more. OK. All right, x squared plus 2x minus 4 equals 11. Can you solve that? If you need time, pause the video and think about it. I will tell you there's a little trick here. OK, let's see what you got. Well. I switched the order of the equation around, but hopefully that didn't trick you. The y value is 11 here. So I'm looking down my y column for 11, my output column. This, these are my y values. And I see one right there. Awesome. OK, so I have a solution, which is 3. And I'm feeling pretty good about that. x equals 3. And I go on, and I'm done. Uh, but there's a little, there's actually another solution, even though you can't quite see it in the table. There's a pattern to this table. Do you see it? You've got two negative 4s right here in the y column. And then you've got two negative 1s right here. And you've got two 4s right here. And so that means that you're going to have two 11s. This is a special type of graph called a parabola. You would have an 11 if we had another value up here. And what would that x value be? Well, that x value would be negative 5. If we had another, another uh, space in our x column there for negative 5, it would come out to be 11. So when we see that pattern, we need to recognize that there are two solutions, even though the table might only show me one. I can find the other solution by just expanding my table a little bit. So those are two solutions. Now, when you're writing a solution set and you have two solutions, we write it with set brackets, and we list the solutions. Now, this is not an ordered pair. You could write it the other way. We generally write them in order from least to greatest. If there were three solutions on a table, we would write all three of them out uh, with commas in between. OK, let's look at one last example using this table. Our equation is x squared plus 2x minus 4 equals negative 8. Use the table to solve that equation. If you need time to think about it, pause the video and restart it when you're ready to hear the solution. OK, well, we can see from the table, we're looking at a pattern. I don't see a negative 8 in here. That's, that's a problem. Doesn't mean it's not a solution, really. Uh, because maybe it's like 2.4 or 2.3 or you know some x value that's not an integer. But what I do see is that the, the pattern here 
is the smallest y value here is at negative 5. And then all of these y values are getting bigger than negative 5. And all these y values are getting bigger than negative 5. So the lowest that the y value is going to go is negative 5. It's never going to get to negative 8. All right, it's never going to get to negative 8 based on this table. So the answer here is no solution. Yeah, that's a little bit of a tricky one. Uh, you know, I saved the tricky one for last. Got to keep you on your toes, right? Sometimes an equation does not have a solution. All right, well, I hope this helped uh, you to see how to solve certain types of equations using a table.